Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to my third video of the day. Um, today was just really interesting day. A lot of um, good cases came to my desk and I'm happy to share this case with you. So, 41 year old asymptomatic female patient, patient presented to our clinic. She was referred from outside to our faculty practice who then, uh, one of our faculty, order the CBCT scan to better look at this area. The area of interest is in uh, tooth number 32 region. So the story goes something like the patient uh, has never really had any dental caries from what I've been told and uh, her outside dentist discovered there was uh, some type of a uh, potentially lesion in the area of number 32. So that dentist, um, once recognizing that, having recognized that, referred the patient to our faculty practice. Our oral surgeon felt that it's important to take a CBCT scan of this area to better assess the location, size of the lesion and its relationship to surrounding structures, which I absolutely agree whenever you suspect a um, a, a, some sort of cystic or tumoral lesion, you should definitely take a comb beam um, in almost all cases that I can think of. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look. Why don't I start from the top edge of the scan? I'm going through the axial view. Okay, third molar, okay, crown of a third molar, second. Oh, he's, yeah, first molar, and premolar, and canine, right? One, two, three, four, five. Scrolling down. And now we're getting into the area of mandibular arch. Do you guys see there's a large radiolucency? Okay, to help you to vi visualize this area better, I'm going to rotate this volume and bring the volume over so that I can put my uh, red line across the arch okay so that you have the sagittal view which you're a lot more accustomed to seeing right at least it's much easier to visualize this way here we have impacted third molar and not only that we have mm, okay I'm not sure let's see what just happened okay uh, we have well-defined corticated pericoronal radiolucency associated with impacted number 32 okay this tooth is impa impacted so far inferiorly such that the root apices are embedded within the inferior cortex of the mandible okay this lesion has caused a disruption of the alveolar crest, as you can see, just above the crown of number 32. Let me rotate this volume, okay? And again, going through this uh, on this axial plane, it does seem to occupy the full buccolingual thickness of the ridge. And as I continue to go uh, toward its apex, you can see that the mesial and distal root, they tend to converge toward the apex. Let's look at this in the coronal plane. Okay. Another thing um, that I have done already is that I've traced the mandibular canal. Visualization of the mandibular canal is very essential when you're dealing with impacted third molar or any pathology associated with the third molar area. Because if you ever had to take out third molar or a cystic or tumoral lesion, you want to know the exact location of the mandibular canal or inferior alveolar nerve, right? For the obvious reasons. So why don't I Okay, go all the way to the back of the uh, mandible. There you go. Okay, 
we're going to try try to trace the mandibular canal in the coronal section, okay? In the coronal plane. There's the start of the mandibular canal and see how it oh excuse excuse me, I was wrong on that. Here's the beginning of the mandibular canal or mandibular foramen right there, okay? So it's coming down nicely. There's that canal. It's coming down and it is now abutting next to the lesion. So that's the lesion and there's there is there is the canal. The canal is coursing obviously lingually and inferior to the lesion and also it's coursing medial to the impacted third molar. This is what I mean by how thin the inferior cortex of the mandible is, okay? Because again, the root APCs are literally embedded into the uh, cortex of the mandible. This canal continues to course anteriorly, medial, uh, medial to tooth number um, 32. So there it is. It's constricted. It's it's thin and look at how thin the canal is let me actually remove that uh, highlight okay didn't like that very much okay uh, apologize for the hiccup anyway let's see Let's look at that one more time. So this time without having the highlighted mandibular canal. There it is. As I'm coursing anteriorly, you see it coming down, coursing medial and lingual to both the lesion and the impacted third. Can you see how, how small and thin and how constricted the canal is? So this is a um, good clinical indication that when you extract this third molar you run the high risk of injuring the nerve there it is and you kind of lose the canal cortication at this point all right so the question is what is this right uh, many of you especially for those of you in my d2 class we haven't quite gone through this lecture so I you know, I, I might want to wait on this a little bit, but for those of you in D3 and D4, you should be able to start to come up with your own differential diagnosis. Okay, the key clue that I'm going to tell you, well, I don't know what it is either because this has not been biopsied, but at least based on the radiographic appearance, uh, I, I have a pretty good uh, idea of what this is. And I think the biggest clue that I can give you is that this lesion appears attached right at the level of the CJ. Do you guys see that? Right at the level of the CJ. And that is a big, big clue for us. Okay. It could always be something else than what I'm currently thinking of, but I'm fairly certain that uh, this is the kind of definitive radiographic features to let us know of what this is. Anyway, this patient will be, uh, should be getting a biopsy done. And once I find out the result, I will certainly share it with you uh, in the description section. Well, thank you again and uh, have a, a great rest of your day.